Hyflux, once considered one of Singapore's most successful enterprises, gammered numerous accolades during its heyday, boasted impressive business growth, and was frequently studied by researchers for its strategic expertise. However, this once thriving company eventually faltered. By late 2020, it succumbed to overwhelming debt and ultimately faced liquidation. The rise and fall of Hyflux are both astonishing and tragic. To comprehend this dramatic turn of events, we must begin at the company's inception. Established in 1989 by an unusual entrepreneur known as Olivia Lum, Lum's venture into this high flux began when she sold her car and small flat to invest into this small-time water treatment startup. During the late 1980s, Lum had also stated that her supervisors were shocked when she told them that she would quit her job as a chemist at Glaxlo to start her own business. Just a few decades later, Hyflux began as a modest water treatment company, aiming to tackle the world's increasing demand for clean, sustainable water sources. Over time, it evolved into an industry leader, recognized for its inventive membrane-based technologies that purified water and minimized waste. At its height, Hyflux boasted a valuation of over 2 billion Singaporean dollars, making it one of Singapore's largest companies. It had ventures extending across Asia, the Middle East, the Americas, and Africa. In Singapore, the company's most notable accomplishment was the completion of Taw Spring Integrated Water and Power Project, the nation's second largest seawater treatment plant supplying over 70 million gallons of treatment water per day. A project that strives across Asia for being the first water plant to be integrated with a power generator and boasting a cost of over a billion Singaporean dollars. Across the world, the company had boasted for earmarking landmark projects that was amongst the world's largest SWRO desalination plants. At the outset, Lum leveraged her background in chemistry to create innovative technologies that utilized membranes for wastewater purification. The company's early stages proved challenging for her, as she had neither funds nor connections. After selling her car, she resorted to riding a scooter while cold calling potential clients which eventually led to securing orders for smaller industrial projects. Hyflux's biggest growth began when the company expanded its operations outside of Singapore. It targeted new markets across Asia and the Middle East, where demand for clean water solutions was particularly strong. Hyflux's international expansion was facilitated by its ability to secure large-scale water treatment projects, such as the Singapore Public Utilities Board New Water Initiative and the Magda Desalination Plant in Algeria which is quoted in 2012 in the company annual report to be the world's largest. Its largest market, however, was no other than China. Asia's largest country boasted over $158 million of its revenue in 2012, which was a considerable sum for a company with only $682 million of revenue. The other important feat was in 2001. Hyflux made its debut on the Singapore Exchange, where it announced to raise about $6.8 million. Of this, it would use about half a million dollars to set up a sales and service in China, and about $2.5 million for expanding its manufacturing and research facilities across Singapore and Shanghai. The successful listing signaled the market's confidence in Hyflux's growth prospects and provided the company with a platform to raise additional capital for its expansion plans. As Hyflux continued to grow, the company sought to diversify its operations and revenue streams venturing to other areas ripe for profit. One of the most significant milestones in Hyflux's diversification strategy was the award of the Taw Spring Integrated Water and Power Project in 2011. The Taw Spring Project, valued at about a billion dollars, was designed to be Singapore's second and largest desalination plant, with a capacity of over 318,500 cubic meters, along with a concession period of 25 years. While the Tawspring project represented a major opportunity for Hyflux, it also exposed the company to new risks and challenges. In 2010, Hyflux reported that it had profit before tax of over $100 million. Yet as the years came by, this profit slowly eroded, and by 2015, it would be cut in half at just $49 million. The company's total liabilities had also started to emerge, from $200 million in 2012 to a massive jump of about $1.4 billion by 2017, signaling a rise in debt but a fall in profit. Despite the challenges surrounding the company's finances, Hyflux's overall performance in the late 2000s and early 2010s remained strong. The company continued to secure major water treatment contracts around the world and was widely regarded as a pioneer and industry leader in its field. 
In 2011, Olivia Lum was even named the Ernest and Young World Entrepreneur of the Year, a testament to her vision and leadership in building Hyflux into a global water treatment powerhouse. The company's share price reached an all-time high in 2010, $3.1 a share, reflecting investor confidence in its growth prospects and strong financial performance. Fast forward to 2018, the downfall of Hyflux began to unfold when the company filed for court protection, revealing its massive debt burden and unsustainable financial position. This shocking announcement left thousands of retail investors who had purchased Hyflux's bonds and preference shares facing the prospect of significant losses. It was reported the year prior that Hyflux announced its first full-year loss since going public. Its renowned Singapore plant, Tospring alone, boasted losses of over $81.9 million. On top of that, the company's total liabilities amounted to over $2.7 billion. With debts, repayments, and a losing company approaching, Hyflux had no other choice but to find legal means to save their company. Upon confirming its debt restructuring with the Singaporean High Court, the company had also suspended its shares listed in the stock exchange, ending with only $165 million of market valuation which was staggeringly low compared to its previous valuations of billions of dollars. A lot of analysts have stated several reasons for its collapse, but the most clear-sighted ones are simply due to its ambitious drive and financial mismanagement. Hyflux's ambitious growth strategy saw the company expanding into numerous overseas markets and diversifying into non-core businesses. The overexpansion stretched the company's resources and exposed it to a range of operational and financial risks. On top of that, Hyflux's financial woes were exacerbated by a series of costly projects which suffered from construction delays, cost overruns, and operational issues. These missteps strained the company's cash flow and eroded investor confidence. In the years following Hyflux's collapse, the company has also been engaged in a complex and protracted restructuring process. Several potential investors and suitors have emerged with varying degrees of interest and commitment to reviving the Bellegarded water treatment firm. A consortium led by Indonesian conglomerates, Solemn Group, and Medco Group even offered Hyflux for $400 million in equity injection once the company in 2018. By 2022, Hyflux also sold Tall Spring Power Station to YTL Power for a price tag of only $270 million. The rise and fall of Hyflux was indeed one of the stories inside Singapore's corporate sector. The more compelling aspect to examine, however, is the impact of Hyflux's collapse on Singapore's economy and its retail investors. The investors who suffered the most were those who failed to see returns from the company. In 2019, it was reported that over 34,000 Hyflux perpetual securities and performance shareholders were owed a total of more than $900 million. Although the exact amount these investors recovered remains unreported, it is evident that they had to endure significant losses. Nowadays, financial disasters like Hyflux go a lot further than the $900 million lost. The damaging impacts can be felt abroad in your wallet and your savings. After all, China is the single biggest country in the global supply chain. But last year, their economy grew at the slowest rate in nearly a century. We're feeling the effects of this slowdown all over the globe. With a lack of crucial resources for the biggest companies in the world, that in turn has caused the S&P 500 to crater, wiping out $36 trillion from investor portfolios last year. Now, a stunning survey even revealed that over half of Americans making six figures are now living paycheck to paycheck. But CEOs aren't letting their money waste away in savings accounts. They're pouring hundreds of millions into assets that can still climb even when stocks fall. In fact, there's a platform dealing in these same assets that paid out over $25.8 million last year. Masterworks, the art investing platform. Masterworks offers art from legends like Picasso by filing their offerings with the SEC, allowing anyone to invest. Each of Masterworks' 13 sales to date has returned a net profit to their investors, with two more sales in the last month. There's a wait list to join Masterworks' 700,000 plus users, but we're giving you special access to skip it at the link in the description. Moreover, the downfall of Hyflux served as a stark reminder to the thousands of retail investors who had invested their hard-earned savings in the company's bonds and preference shares, highlighting the risks associated with corporate debt investments. As a result, many investors experienced considerable losses and had to reconsider their investment strategies following Hyflux's collapse. 
In response to the High Flux Saga, the Singaporean government, through several departments, which included the Monterey Authority of Singapore, had launched a joint investigation into High Flux around 2020. Two years later, it then reported that High Flux founder Olivia Lum and five others were charged with violating the Securities and Futures Act in Singapore. They were accused of making false and misleading statements in High Flux's financial reports between 2016 and 2018. The charges allege that they failed to disclose material information and provided inaccurate financial data, which misled investors about the company's financial health and outlook. Finally, the company was liquidated in 2021 after the High Court had ordered the company to. The High Flux Collapse is a cautionary tale of a once-thriving company brought down by a combination of ambitious expansion, financial mismanagement, and challenging market forces. The saga has had far-reaching consequences for Singapore's economy, investors, and regulatory environment, serving as a stark reminder of the importance of financial discipline, risk management, and investor protection. As we reflect on the High Flux story, it's clear that while the pursuit of innovation and growth can bring great rewards, it must be balanced with prudence, transparency, and accountability to ensure the long-term success and sustainability of business and investment portfolios. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.